So the uh, next video for today, and I think will be the last one, um, is going to uh, broaden a little bit what we learned last video about functions and, and teach sort of one of the um, few more complex functions that we'll learn this semester um, and one that allows us to look at data from multiple tables together. Uh, but before we do that, I want to kind of close the loop on, on, on this piece of data here. There's, there's one last thing we hadn't done yet. Uh, that I think is is really kind of important and if you select all by clicking up here and again I'm not sure exactly where it is on a Windows but I think it's under data if you were to go to data and, and filter uh, you get these very cool little drop downs um, and they're neat for two reasons you know one it can actually allow you to sort of filter so I could literally open and you know scroll down and try to look at something that's relevant to me I could find Philadelphia you know, for example, and open that only and, and see what my relevant number is, you know, 56% chance of meeting two people from different backgrounds. Uh, but you can also sort, right? So I could take that diversity index and sort descending, um, you know, and then I could really see who's sort of the highest, right? Hilo Hawaii. Um, and you see that kind of often because, um, you know, such a, a, a mix and a high percentage of, of Hawaiian Pacific Islanders as well. But then you got Vallejo. San Francisco, San Jose, sort of other kind of high uh, volume areas, you know, all the way down to some of the ones that aren't really diverse at all. Um, you know, down at the bottom, San Juan, Puerto Rico, Glen Falls, New York, Johnstown, PA, so on and so forth. So that's selection, cool thing to do. Um, but last thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to pose a totally different, you know, query. We have this idea of uh, total population here and in the table I provided you for homework business data um, you know is something I also pulled that shows the total number of establishments um, and then employees but we're really focused on this establishment category and this is like a census is estimate of the number of businesses uh, in each geography um, can't always get this for smaller data but typically you can for you know state or or county or metro area and so the concept here is how many businesses are in each um, area. And, you know, that's a nice uh, metric to cover, but it'd be actually even sort of better if you could look at what the number of firms, you know, businesses, uh, establishments, uh, is relative to the population, right? So, you know, how many, uh, you know, businesses per every thousand people, or how many businesses per person is sort of a better, uh, you know, element to do it. And... We need a way then to get this information here, right? The the total estimates uh, over to, to this table. Um, now, shouldn't be a difficulty now. We could just probably copy and paste, you know, because I think for the most part these two line up, but you never know, right? You might have one that is missing elements or is smaller than the other um, or has multiple records. And so it's actually better to have a concept that lets you join data based on a common field. And this idea of joining, I'm introducing it. In, in just this early class for Excel because it's going to frequently come back when we're playing with our Excel data and it's frequently going to come back when we're playing with uh, ArcGIS, this idea of taking discrete tables and then and, and merging them together based on common values uh, is really going to be critical and a critical part of sort of our learning this semester. And you accomplish it first by finding common Field. So in this instance, we kind of have three, right? You have a major ID, you have an ID here, and you have the geography name. Any of those are going to work for what I want to do, uh, but that's always the first step is finding a field you have exactly the same in two data sets. And then you do a function that's called VLOOKUP. So let me walk you through it. Equals VLOOKUP. And this is our first sort of complex function, and it's going to ask for four basic things. One, the lookup value. That means, what am I actually looking up? Well, let's do metronic. That's what you're going to look up in each row. Good. Put a comma. Table array. Look at that as, where am I looking it up? For this, you want to be selecting the first column that you select should be what you're trying to match. And then every subsequent column you select is the data you might want to bring back. So in this instance, I would start here at Geography, scroll over to Estimate, and I could 
scroll all the way down and hold shift at the bottom. Now, a helpful thing with Excel is when you're joining a VLOOKUP from another table, it automatically does this for you, right? Puts the dollar sign in front of each. But that doesn't always happen. And it is critical that the table array always has dollar signs in front of the row and the column so that you don't accidentally have it move down as you're sort of moving down. You want to make sure it's always looking at a uniform, um, uniform area for doing its lookup. The next thing is the column index number. I just hit comma from right here. What that means is what am I bringing back? Here's the way it works. The first column you selected, which was the match, that's got the ID of one, and then every subsequent column goes up by one. So if that's column one, and I selected two estimate, that would be column two. And for now, always end in false. That just means it needs to be an exact match. Oops, what have I screwed up here? So we can sort of scroll up and see what things are causing uh, the issue here, but effectively I'm trying to pull some population data and, uh, oh, you know what it is? I think one of them, I didn't download micro areas, right? So you're going to see any time where there's a micro area, and it's actually sort of good. The micro areas won't really join, you know, because I didn't download the data. But you can see what happens when something doesn't join. It tells you NA it's not applicable, but everything else works, right? So Abilene, you know, 169747 is taken directly from here, 169747. And same thing, you can sort of copy and paste all the way through all the way down to the bottom. And like anything, I think it's always better to do a, a copy paste and paste the special. I can list this as you know, population. I might do my data filter sort this so that the NAs aren't in my way, get rid of my filter, and then I can start to do that calculation I mentioned. So what if really what I'm doing here is number of businesses divided by, let's say the population divided by a thousand. And what I'd be saying here is the number of businesses per thousand people. There you go, right? You've got 35 businesses in Carson City for every thousand people and you can scroll all the way down to anyone that's sort of matched for you and that would give you sort of a number for each of them you know number of business establishments for every 1,000 residents and you now have uh, you know a little bit more comparable number that you can kind of compare without worrying about the size of a place um, you know uh, differentiating why the number of businesses is bigger or smaller so that's sort of the last lesson there is this concept of VLOOKUP that you can use that to join multiple tables together.